Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. And this week, we're talking about the episode, Into the Woods. It's a Christmas episode! It's really not, Merry though. Merry Christmas! Although it's not Christmas when you're posting this, so whatever. Merry Fishmas! Sure. It's it's not Fishmas when this is posting. I don't know when this is posting. Probably like August or something. <laughs> Have fun out in the summer. Sometime folks. in the summer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe June, I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about this particular episode. So this episode originally aired December 19th, 2000, attracting 4.9 million viewers. Yeah. So quite a drop from uh, the episode last week, which was 5.5 million. Yeah. They like that cooler, Demon. Well, it's also because this is less than a week before Christmas. Nah. Yeah, I guess so. So, in this episode, we start off at the hospital. The Scooby gang awaits news from the doctor about Joyce's surgery. And they're all relieved when the surgery is a success. Dawn spends the night with Xander and Anya. Yeah! <laughs> ten out of ten episodes. Let's play this, uh, that, that, that game of life again. <laughs> you only like that because you always win. <laughs> you could give me real money this time, though. That would be different. <laughs> oh, sure. Let's go ahead and teach her actual gambling, and then we'll let her have a drink. It's, uh... Could we just have an entire episode where Dawn just stays with Xander and Anya? I would is be there, so happy. Is there an episode like that? I don't remember one. Well, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I don't think there is, unfortunately. Sadness. It was like the second or third instance with that sort of... Uh, because setup. it's always so good. Yeah. <laughs> because it's always so good. Uh, they do this so that Buffy and Riley can have some private time. <clears throat> Bible for <clears throat> Bible stuff. <clears throat> yeah, no, I think I prefer Dodd's explanation. They're going to have to sex. <laughs> oh, I, every time Dawn's on screen with Xander and Anya, I'm happy. <laughs> no, it's to get me out of the house so they can have loud, obnoxious sex. Does that mean we can't? <laughs> It's so good. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Anya. With the, with, the house, with the house to themselves, Buffy and Riley spend, spend a romantic evening together. In the middle of the night, Riley sneaks out of the house. Spike, having secret, uh, having been on his nightly vigil, vigil because he's a pervert now, <sighs> secretly follows Riley to an old building. Buffy spends a day with her mother in the hospital discussing Joyce's wig options and Buffy's relationship with Riley. Spike wakes Buffy from uh, her sleep that night to show her what Riley has been doing. Buffy is shocked to find him in the arms of a female vampire being fed upon. Graham has persuade, uh, persuaded his commanding officer to seek Riley's help in destroying demons for the military. They offer Riley a position in the military's new anti-demon organization, assuring him that their group is nothing like the Initiative, and they exist only to destroy demons, not study them. I thought that was like, isn't that basically the Initiative again? Basically. Essentially, <laughs> this maybe not too much of the actual capturing and supposed researching. Yeah. Cause it's I more mean, so of a case of, oh, hey, demon. <laughs> yeah. The Initiative was basically just capturing, not like destroying Still, I have a feeling this is going to be the Initiative 2.0. Yeah. I don't know. I well, guess we'll find out. Well, I guess depending on if they go on a little bit too happy of a demon-killing spree. Buffy and the gang go after the nest of vampires only to find the building empty. Buffy sets the building on fire, leaving her friends in the dark about what's truly bothering her. Yeah. And I think this is the first time Buffy's actually committed, like, a serious crime. Yeah, she just committed arson. Yeah. Because, like, she's, like, probably committed other crimes, but relatively minor stuff. Yeah, she's not exactly in the right sort of mindset to be concerned about her actions. Yeah, you don't normally just see her just commit arson. Yeah, yeah in most cases... But she did open just... fire in her, like, you know... Oh, yes, bazooka. there was the rocket launcher. Oh, incident. yeah, in the mall, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a crime. That's a crime. <laughs> that's a... <laughs> How did she not get arrested for that? Did we? Have, well, there no was idea. that one whole hullabaloo that was going on, and the whole big supposed dangerous demon that was there. Still, I feel like you'd arrest somebody for shooting a bazooka in a mall. But that's just me. Me and my crazy liberal ideas. Mm. <laughs> Riley is furious that Spike allowed Buffy to see the truth 
And after throwing the vampire around a bit, he stakes it. But the stake is plastic. And Pursley, amazing idea, as it kind of sits. It's a cool idea to just fuck with Spike. Like, he just yeah. stakes him with a plastic it's stake. Like, oh, I finally got like sp- uh, staked. Why am I, I alive poof. still? God damn it. <laughs> I'm still alive. I really wish he hadn't told him that and Spike would just think he's invincible. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, I'm super vampire. But then, of course, it also hurts like bloody hell, so wonderful torture device. Yeah, and you would kind of have to let the viewer know that it's plastic. Yeah, no, of course. And Riley's actions were only a warning. Spike maintains that Riley has no future with Buffy, and the two rivals eventually share a drink. <laughs> they just have this fucking bottle of liquor. I don't even know what it's meant to be, but it's great. Discussing how they both love her, but she doesn't seem to return the feeling for either of them. Yeah. Spike tells Riley that he is generally generally jealous of his position of intimacy with Buffy, although sometimes wonder if Riley's situation is worse, being so close to Buffy while not actually having her. Mm. However, uh, he ultimately declares that Riley has the better deal. Mm. Riley asks Spike if he really thinks he has a shot with Buffy. Spike responds in the negative, but but says that if Ella's got to try, he's got to do what he can. Just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buffy releases her aggressions on a punching bag in the training room until Riley shows up and demands to talk to her. Uh, he tells her that his uh, late night vamp activities uh, started because he wanted to know what Buffy felt when she was bitten by Dracula. Riley tells her, uh, tells her that the vampires needed him and Buffy didn't. After Buffy tells him that she's given, everything, uh, given him everything she has, Buffy says he doesn't believe her. Or Riley says he doesn't believe her and tells her about the offer to return to the military and he's going to leave unless she can convince him not to. Mm. The vampires from the nest surround a distraught Buffy as she's leaving the shop. She stakes all eight of them in record time, including the vampire who had been seen drinking from Riley, who she like chucks like this like wooden spear thing. It looks really cool. Oh mm-hmm. man, javelin throw. Uh... Where am I? Ah, Xander witnesses the slang and confronts Buffy, telling her that he thinks that Riley has given her everything and risked everything for her, and accuses her uh, her of treating Riley like a rebound guy and expecting uh, him to be convenient after Angel's departure from Sunnydale. She points out that Xander himself treats Anya like as a mere convenience, but <clears throat> Xander pursues this point, telling her that her relationship with Riley is the kind that comes around once in a lifetime and that she has to decide if she's really willing to lose him for good. I fucking hate Xander here, but we'll get to that later. You hate Xander here? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Buffy takes off, and although she runs as fast as she can, is unable to get to the helipad in time to stop Riley from leaving. The helicopter flies away with Buffy on the lawn, on the landing pad, calling after Riley. He stares in the other direction, the helicopter's loud noise, noise drowning out Buffy's cries, leaving without knowing that Buffy had tried to reach him. After his talk with Buffy, Xander realizes that he needs to tell Anya how much he loves her, and he does. Still shocked, Buffy returns returns home over Riley leaves Sunnydale, not looking back. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what did you all think of this episode? It had the emotions of things. It was fun! Wasn't it a good Christmas episode? Yeah! It had the emotions of things. Oh, God! No, I was, um, I was actually more happy to see Riley just go, because he was being a dick. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, let's talk about a few things in this episode. Want to hit the big thing first, or go down the list? What are you talking about? The Xander thing, supposedly? I know, we'll get to that later. First, we'll talk about international titles. So, in French, Out of Love, and German, The Ultimatum. Boo. Yeah, pretty much on the nose. Terrible. So, uh, this would be Riley's last episode. As okay, a series bye, reg- Riley. As a series regular. Oh, okay. He will make an appearance in season six. Ah, okay. Okay. In, in, like, one episode. No? But it'll be fun. In a flashback? No. Nope. Okay. He will actually come back to Sunnydale for one episode. Haha, uh-huh, killed the demon. Oh, Just hey, like Buffy. how, um... That's actually kind of basically how they run into each other. <laughs> like pretty much exactly. 
So it's basically similar to like Oz coming back for the one episode. Uh, yeah, very similar kind of thing. Uh, so Mark Lucas, uh, who plays Riley, left the show. I couldn't find out why, um, because he didn't really seem to have anything lined up directly after Buffy. Um, so this aired in, what, late 2000? Yes, late 2000. So he might have been shooting um, the movie We Were Soldiers. Mm. That might have been the issue. But mm. I couldn't, because that came out in like 2002. Mm. But I don't know for sure. Mm. Uh, so as I said last time, uh, this was the first episode directed by Marty Noxon, who has been a major uh, writer and producer on the show from, mm. I want to say, season two or three. Mm. And uh, will only become more important to the show's uh, creative flow over the next few years. Hmm. Yay. Yes. So, let's talk about this episode a little more in detail. Uh, so, the whole Xander speech. Yes. I really dislike. Okay. Explain. Okay. He's just a dick. Xander? Or Riley? Both. They're both kind of just dicks. Sander wasn't really being a dick to Buffy. He kind of was. Uh, okay. He's being real, really. Mm, we, we have very different opinions on this, clearly. Mm. Um, I hate I hate the whole Xander thing because, A, it's none of his business. Sure, yeah. it isn't his business. Not really. And two, he is so fucking wrong. <laughs> With just he gives of... terrible advice. Riley has been nothing but a fucking douche because of his going away, trying to take care of things all by himself, and not bothering to be with Buffy when he doesn't even know what. Or the whole going like on. getting willfully uh, sucked by vampires, or all the other stupid shit he's done. Oh yeah. No, he is not good to be around. Hmm. Like he clearly needs fucking therapy or some shit. Buffy is right to be like, no, you gotta fuck off, me. Mm. Yeah. Unless unless Buffy was going to tell him off and say, get the fuck out. Which she should have done. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I would have seen that being an option. I just don't like, like, I don't like giving Xander that because that's not Xander's character. Yeah, no, it was kind of a, oh, hey, Xander has this incredible sort of moment. It's like, Wait a minute, this is a left turn out of flipping nowhere. What the heck just happened? Like, I can see Xander, like, in a way it kind of makes sense. Because Xander is basically Buffy's best friend other than Willow. <laughs> and the person that we've seen her interact with the most other than probably Willow. That is the problem. But it just, something about it just doesn't feel right to me. Mm. Hmm. From my perspective, Xander kind of saw something wrong with Buffy and thought he would confront her without really knowing what exactly her problem was, just knowing that it had to do with Riley, even though he didn't really know 100% what Riley did. Okay. Yep. I, like, I, I get what you're saying, but my I think the part that really annoys me is, like, Riley's given up everything for you. No, he fucking didn't! What did he give up? The initiative? The initiative were fucking evil! Yeah, the initiative was evil. You can't count that, because they were fucking evil! Being a super soldier, that went away because the initiative went away, and they were fucking evil. That and it was affecting him in a fairly bad way. Yeah, it would have made his heart explode. Yeah. His heart would have exploded. Yeah, he was set up for a rather short life. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't like. I it. think the only way this would have made a bit more sense is if he was there a little bit more often. But I think that would have been seen more as clingy. Where it brought up more of the terms of Buffy wants to handle the particular things herself. And with the couple of issues with Joyce and other sorts of stuff, that makes sense. With more of the monster hunting and other sorts of stuff that she did, it's kind of a case of, yeah, we understand that this layer, but ask for help, sweetie. So this was done, they got rid of Riley simply because the fan base did not like him. Yeah, that's understandable. <laughs> Fair. That, that was basically just like, okay, we need to get him off the show because nobody fucking likes him. I imagine there were a lot of people that was like, yay, just like Buffy. I was feeling right at the end of the episode. I'm like, oh, thank God he's gone. <laughs> Buffy, stop running! I don't dislike Riley up until the last few episodes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Especially fair. with the whole going and 
doing the vampire things with the other stuff of the block. Like, he started to be a dick. Yeah, no, like, the vampire thing, that could have been an interesting story, but they just write him to be a dickhead. Yeah. Mm. Which just isn't terribly interesting. So, uh, did either of you have anything else you want to talk about for this episode? Xander got some. Because he went over to Anya and did the whole additional speech for that how yeah. hey, I love you and all the whatnot. So, yay! Well, yeah, that wins points with Anya. Many points. Anya's fucking great. <laughs> Anya, yes, she is. Speaking of which, our next episode is called Triangle. And Anya's going to feature heavily in this episode. Oh yeah, man, are they the, gonna bring the chicken feet back? When, when we went from Anya to Triangle, you know what I thought, right? What? A triangle. Okay, Xander's part of this triangle, right? Yep. What's the third part of the triangle? I'm gonna tell you. Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> Giles visits England, leaving Anya in charge of the magic box. Ten on ten already. Willow accidentally unleashes a troll who used to be Anya's boyfriend. Oh boy. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Eventually, Anya and Willow manage to send him to the land of trolls, but not before he wreaks havoc at the bronze. Throughout the episode, Anya and Willow fight over Xanya. Xander. What? Willow and Anya? Mm. It's I... going to be good. Oh boy. <laughs> Additionally, what? You'll see. Jeez. It makes me worried about the episode after that. I'm more worried about what Tara's going to be thinking of this. I mean, what the heck? No, this is a fun episode. <laughs> oh man, look at all this comical hijinks while Tara's standing off in the corner being like, what the heck? Oh, um, Justin, you don't have to worry too much about the next few episodes. Uh, we still have a while before the one that puts a stake through your heart. Well, I guess. I mean, we just went through like a couple kind of sad episodes. I mean, there was a few happy moments like, oh, yay, Joyce is okay, For no. quote and quote. <laughs> Xander, let me see your watch. There's a clock behind you. But I want to see what time it is. That can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> so much good stuff. Anyway, um, it is going to be... Well, I was going to say the rest of the season is going to be fun, but that's not true. Oh, man. It's going to be a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, yay. Let's get out the plastic steak. <laughs> there's a problem with that spot, though. Okay. When he stakes him with the thing, there's no blood and his shirt doesn't rip. Oh. <laughs> I was, like, looking. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a problem here. Indeed. Anyway, uh, if there's neither anything, nothing from either of you, that'll be it for this week. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. Oh, I should hit the stop button before I try to think.